All right, I'll intro us, and here we go. My name is Darren Wade, broadcasting live from SCS Studio One in beautiful St. Clair Shores, Michigan. Thank you for tuning into the program. This is the special Scott Talk edition today. 
We are live here in SCS Studio One. Thank you for listening, everybody, and here we go. That was the Scottalites with Garden of Love, only on your Detroit Sky Radio. Hey, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning into the show today, and uh, like I said, we have a special uh, Scott edition today, and with me in the studio today, well, me, Darren Way, um, your host of Detroit Sky Radio, and would you like to introduce you guys? Or Yeah, go ahead. Hey, I'm Ska Bob. Hey, Bob. Ska Bob. Yeah, I was going to ask you earlier, like, how you wanted to be referenced as a ska bob. Yes. Just about all my friends call me that, so, yeah. Fair, fair enough. And? I am Liz. Hello, Liz. Hello. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to, uh, so we have ska bob and Liz here in the studio today, and, um... So we're going to do, like, an, one hour of talk today. Uh, basically, we don't really have anything, um... You know, anything's really set, as long as we keep the conversation ska-related, and, uh... I don't know, a couple things I was thinking of, and you guys can, you know, whatever. I, I figured, like, a couple good topics would probably be, um, well, first of all, I wonder if this is going to be considered our debut show, you know, and this might be an ongoing, like, once a month thing, perhaps. Uh, we'll see We'll see what happens with that. Um, but, I don't know, I think one of our topics, uh, you know, some topics that we can maybe talk about today would be maybe, well, I think start off with... Um, how we got introduced into the genre in the first place because, um, you know, it's one of those things which isn't, you know, it's never been, you know, it's always been considered an underground genre or whatever. So there's been some point in your life where you found out about it by something and then you just, you know, started listening to ska. You know, I, I, I vividly remember two instances where myself I can share. Um, so, yeah, like, I guess that, and then... For those who are listening, you can kind of think about that as well. Like, at what point, you know, um, did you even recognize that the genre even existed? You know, because obviously it wasn't from the radio. So, so we can talk about that. Um, you know, all of our instances of where we, um, yeah, where we uh, first heard about ska, and then we just started listening to it. Maybe a second other topic we can share around it would be something like, um, what would you say is one of your favorite ska bands? Um, also like what kind of, um, I don't know, maybe talk about a couple concerts you went to earlier, you know, once you found out what Scott was, what were some of the Scott shows that you went to that are sort of memorable that you can think of. And we could talk about that, like being second and then maybe third, um, I don't know. depends on how much we can get in an hour. Like a third could be like, um, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, because I think we're all kind of like the same age you know there's like the 90s third wave ska stuff that happened and then you know if there's anything we can talk about as far as like what happened with ska like afterwards like in the mid 2000s or something because i know things kind of changed there i mean i kind of stopped listening to stuff you know with bands uh you know after 2000 came around um oh and then we can kind of talk about like you know lastly i guess you know where where, where is ska now with any of the bands that might be still playing or semi-retired and if Ska's going anywhere, or if it ever did go anywhere. There's a lot of really good bands that have just started up over the last few years. Really? There's, yeah. Uh, Westbound Train, Soul Radix, a um, bunch of local stuff, mostly uh, Eric Abbey's bands, but uh, doesn't mean they're not good. <laughs> so Sorry, Eric. Uh, he's, in, he's in like four bands, isn't he? Right. Um, uh, well, yeah, well, so we'll talk about that. So um, I guess because uh, we still have like on the timer here, we have 51 solid minutes right now Woo-hoo. of conversation. So I don't know. So did you, which, 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 who wants to start as far as like, um, you know, when, when did you find out that the genre existed and, you know, because you probably remember the the exact point, I would say, mm-hmm. when you found out the genre existed and you started getting away with away from anything that was top forty or on eighty nine X or you know the riff and things like that on the radio back in you know the 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 the, the decade of alternative music and mm-hmm. stuff with all the one hit win- wonders and stuff and then somehow you if you're like me you you were in that group and then some at one point you transitioned out of that and went into just nothing but probably ska and punk music and stuff i grew up uh, my parents listened to a lot of oldies music back from you know the music from when they were kids so we were always listening to oldies and kind of by accident not even knowing what it was i was hearing the scatolites and whatnot because you'd hear you know my boy lollipop or the israelites on on 104.3 and dug those songs never really knew it was anything other than just music at that point and so 
loved the songs and then just kind mm. of blipped into the past when I started being able to get my own CDs and I became a bit of a metalhead for a while and then grunge happened and I was like, oh God, okay, that sucks. And uh, it so happens I went to high school with some of the guys from Gangster Fun. And oh. they were playing a show at... Uh, I think it's Temple Beth El over on Telegraph. Really tall, weird shaped building. Did they show up to the show? They, they did. Okay, I was. Okay. I, I didn't learn how bad the gangster fun was for showing up to their shows until several years later. Okay. Um, but they, yeah, I went to the show with my girlfriend, and I was just like, "Holy shit, that is amazing! What is that?" And okay. from then on, it's it's so fun. it's from right. So it's from people you went to school with. Some of gangster fun is when you actually went to one. Yeah. What school is this? Roper. Oh, you Roper. went to Roper. Yeah. Was, do you know Paul Royal? Maybe. He was from Axe Mama, a bass player. No, I, I, He went to the Roper School, I know that. What year did he graduate? Uh, he's probably like, uh, I, I would say he's 38, 39 right now. No, probably too young for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Roper's so, a very small school. Yeah, like, where, where is it? In uh, Birmingham. Birmingham. There's two campuses, one in, one in Birmingham, one in Bloomfield Hills. But like, when I graduated, we had the biggest graduating class they'd ever had, 37 kids. Uh, we're third, really? Yeah. We're, now I remember Paul. He went there, but he, I remember he was like in East England or East Village or something in Detroit, and he went to Roper. Yeah. You know, he didn't go to DPS or whatever. But uh, where were you living at the time? I was living in Shelby Township. And then you went to Birmingham to yeah. the Roper yeah, School. Yeah, gone, gone to Utica Public Schools and um, gotcha. Got a stellar reception from them, and we were like, you know what, this sucks, and uh, found Roper and got in, and the rest is history. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, who exactly from Gangster Fun were you in school with? Uh, oh God, you're going to ask me this and I'm never going to remember. Uh, <laughs> or what did they play at least, I guess? Uh, offhand, I really don't remember who. If I had uh, I one of their CDs here, can, I'll, I'll pull out the liner notes and see if I remember the names. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. I, I'm lucky I remember oh, the names me too. half the time. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, oh, Josh Silverstein. And I think maybe Brian Bowie. Okay. It was either Broly or Minnick, I think. But uh, yeah, Josh Silverstein was definitely the Roper kid. Gotcha. Wow. So that's where that's just that's when you know you found out that the genre existed. So as soon as that happened, then you just started like as as investigating happened, was, like other bands of the genre. From there, yeah, I, I um, used to be able to actually find their records at like uh, Harmony House and whatnot. <laughs> Harmony House. Where they'd, they'd actually have a ska section, and I'd go in and I buy. They had a ska uh, section in Harmony House. It, uh, wow. Some of them had a ska section. Some of them it was mixed into alternative. Alternative, right? But mm-hmm. like, I'd find comp CDs. Like the first probably half dozen CDs I bought were compilations of just a bunch of, you know, second wave or third wave stuff. And then I figured out who I wanted to listen to from there and built a little bit of a collection. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, like I said, we all have a story. If we listen to ska music, then we all have a story on where you know we, you know. The, that when we into when it, we got into it, stuff, so you know. would you like to share? Would you like me to start, or would you well, like to go? For me, it was the punk scene, and like me living in Garden City, like we had the Mosquito Club and Pharaohs. <laughs> oh God! Pharaohs. So going there and hanging out there, I met you know seen bands like Muster Plug and Gangster Fun and Suicide Machines there, and I just was totally turned on to like ska. So but wait. I was already into like punk and stuff. And you just, so you're you've always been listening to punk since high school, then. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Lo- finding out the ska thing was not some revolutionary thing. You always knew no, it, it, it existed kind of, because they, you know, the punk and ska scene. They all like fell into the same genre yeah. of music, the okay. same group of people and yeah. stuff. And then when you're going to these shows at 15, you're like, yeah, mom and dad drive me, you know. But primarily up? from the Mosquito yeah. Club, though. Mm-hmm. Isn't that Pharaohs? Was that is that the well, same yeah. place? Pharaos they changed the name. Yeah, Token Lounge and stuff like Isn't that. Mosquito right Club now. more of a metal club, though. Yeah. I mean, right now it is. Now okay. it's like token lounge and everything. Okay. But back then, like, you had your local punk groups and stuff. And, like, in Garden City, like, I don't know, like, the punk groups were, like, trying to form and start new things out there. And, like, you just go to the Mosquito Club and of going Pharaohs right. and you go see, like, Suicide Machines and Gangster Fun and Parker Kings. And it what, was, like... What year do you think that... What year like are we are we talking about? <clears throat> ninety five, right? So you, yeah. you're you're way before me. You, you got into it before I did. I was a late bloomer, I think, and uh, you certainly probably ninety three or four. No, it was it was probably ninety five. Like 90, when I saw Gangster Fun, that would have been late ninety three, early ninety four. But I didn't really start 
like I didn't find out you could go to Scott shows other than just gangster fun showing up at, at, at a school event till probably 95 mm -hmm. somewhere thereabouts okay yeah, because there were all, like, <coughs> talent shows and things like mm -hmm. that, and you're like, Little well, shows at, like, a church and have a, a, just those club nights churches had back in the 90s, mm -hmm. and every now and then they'd be, oh, yeah, and there's these bands playing. I think that's, uh, I think that's where I saw the Supertones was at a church, which, not surprising, they're Christian. Right, people. yeah, I was just <laughs> going to say, okay, interesting. Yeah, them and, like, Inspector something, and, uh... Inspector 7, Five Iron Frenzy. A five, yeah, yeah, Five Iron, Iron Frenzy uh, as well. Ska bands. Yeah, right. Um... Yeah, that's yeah. I never really listened to any of them. I knew they existed, but I don't know. Maybe because the word Christian was tagged to it, or I just really didn't, know. or I just didn't get around to it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> They're gonna convert me. No, <laughs> no. But um, so that's interesting. Like with me, um, so my story is kind of interesting because well, all yours is interesting, but it's different, I guess. Like. Like, I didn't really, you know, I was listening to alternative music, I guess, and I had, like, a rock band, and we were just playing alternative covers of, like, I don't know, Tonic and Dishwalla and uh, The Refreshments and, you know, uh, 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 just a whole bunch, all, the, all those alternative 90 bands that just exploded with their one-hit wonder song, Oasis, we played a cover song for So, yeah, right, no, but, you know, that was, but that was, no, not Weezer, but, but, but when I was in high school. He stopped there. But when I, but prior to that, um, when I was living in Livonia, um, I lived across the street from Derek Grant, and he drummed for the Suicide Machines, right? So, and I was in seventh grade at the time, and he was probably like in ninth or tenth grade or whatever. And I think uh, uh, Jay Navarro was a couple, maybe a year older than him, maybe even. So they would have Suicide Machine practices in the basement directly across the street from my house, right? And, you know, I'm just in seventh grade, so I don't know anything, right, you know. And I remember the one time Derek said something like, hey, do you want this, like, cassette tape of our band? It's called, uh, you know, Jack Kevorkian on the Suicide Machines. It's five bucks. And somehow I never bought it from him, but uh, and I remember bought, buying some like sort of, item. yeah, I know, jeez, I should have done that, <laughs> you know. But I remember buying, like, a drum set from him, like some crappy drum set that he didn't want anymore, and I'd buy a cymbal and some stuff. I wasn't a drummer, but I don't know, I just bought... You know, that I had in the garage, and he would sell me this stuff. He was probably like, you know, playing me for a fool and how much he charged. Like, I paid, I don't know. I don't know. But, anyways, but we would hang out, you know, here and there. He'd just be playing his acoustic guitar across the street here, in you know, on the, you know, right on his front porch. And I would go over there, probably bothering him in his mind. You know, I'm just some little kid. Anyway, so, and then we moved to Elmont, which is like uh, 41 mile north of Romeo on Van Dyke. So we moved from Livonia to Elmont. And then I ended up going to high school there, and then I went to, uh, um, I ended up getting a job where, where my dad worked over in Port Huron and, um, at a carpet store. He's sold rug for 30 years. And uh, I don't know, like during, and I would do like some stock boy stuff when I was a junior or a senior over there. And uh, I'd go over there, you know, um, and work over at the carpet store. So they have a Harmony House. You know, Harmony House uh, at the time in uh, Port Huron. And then, uh, yeah, I saw the CD. It said, like, The Suicide Machines. I'm like, wow, that sounds familiar. That's like Derek Grant's band. Mm -hmm. You know, so I bought it. And I'm like, huh, this is, okay, wow. He lived right across the street from me. And this was, like, 96 or 97 or something like that. And then, uh, and then, so that was the one thing I heard about Scott was then. This was, like, 96, 97 when I was a junior in high school. And then after that, um Remember, like, uh, remember when they had, like, BMG Music, you know, where you'd sign up for 12 CDs, oh, get yeah. one for free, and you do it on the mail or something like that? You're stuck with a bill, and you're like, why am I stuck with these No, but then, you'd cancel, but then you would cancel, right? And then you would, like, like, some people were doing some sort of, like, I don't know, there was something where, you, like, you canceled after you got your, um, um, you know, whatever. I don't know, like ninety. And then you signed up again and got another but like twelve you, CDs. You're talking like ninety seven, ninety eight, and stuff. That's like when everyone was coming to like St Andrews and the Shelter and all that stuff, where all these big ska bands were getting a lot. You know, like they were coming all over the place. Yeah. You know, it was like every other weekend. Thank God I had an ID in a car. Woohoo! So <laughs> I got to like go to these things, and then like. 
I mean, like, I remember seeing um, the specials at Warp Tour of 98. Really? I was mad that I missed that one. That was amazing. Wasn't that? Wait, that was in Pontiac. Like, that, that, that was the one in Pontiac. The one on the garage, top of yeah. the garage. When you had state fairs and you had, uh, like what it, was it? The when Phoenix. You had Effects and Bad Religion. And, it wasn't that. Yeah. yeah, it was at the Phoenix Amphitheater. Yeah, on, the, on top of mm-hmm. the garage. And I had, like, my dad drive me there. I was like, thanks, Dad. I was there, and I don't <laughs> think I saw the special. I don't think I saw the specials play that year. They did it. They did wasn't it Eminem times. there that year? No, that was. That, that was, was the year, year after, after yeah. and stuff. That was when Kid Rock was there, when the specials were there, and we ended up booing him off the stage. Like, he had to stop playing, and I was like, this is amazing. Right. Um, well, just just for one more second, though, but, like, so back to the BMG music thing. So there was, like, a bass player from my high school, and he'd buy, like, 12 CDs, basically just jazz music stuff he'd buy. But he bought, like, uh, the Boss Tones, a uh, Boss Tone CD. I don't know how, I don't know why. He gave it to me, like, here, do you want this? And, uh, like, I took it. So that was another reason why I knew Scott was there, because it was the Questions, the Answers, Kinder Words mm-hmm. album or whatever, the police car in front. That was yeah. pretty good. So it was that and the Suicide Machines, Destruction by Definition. Those two CDs is when I found out the genre was there, and then I just started transferring over, and I found out about Mustard Plug, and then, you know, Exceptions and Gangster Fun, and I started, you know, that's where things happen around 97 or so. And then, um, so, yeah, so, yeah, from the machines from across the street doing some band practices, and then, uh, yeah, and then that CD from Boss Tones with Kinder Words. And I think one of my first ska shows was in 98 when I went to go see them over at uh, Clutch Cargo's. Like in March, February, it was cold out, standing outside of the, that church you know, to get in to see them. The pie tasters were on the bill as well. And uh, and I didn't even know the Boss Tones. I didn't even know they were who they were. So when the pie tasters went up, I actually I thought they they were the Boss Tones for a split second. <laughs> but then I found out that's not the Boss Tones. This is the second act, which is the pie tasters. And then um, I remember getting like immediately like like Suicide Machines like had a show at St Andrews Hall. Um, and I, so I bought a ticket through Harmony House, and only to find out my mom. I don't know. My mom just said, "You're not going to Detroit." So I bought mm-hmm. the ticket, and then it went to waste because she wasn't she wasn't going to have me drive down to Detroit to go see the Suicide Machine show because they were playing one in like a '98 or '97 or something like that. That was the only. That was the first and last time that I was. You know, uh, after that, I went to every show that I wanted to, but you know. Which is weird. She grew up in Detroit, you know, whatever. But I don't know. I just remember that. Like, no, you're not going to Detroit. You know, that's how she said. <laughs> She's like, well, I bought a ticket. Well, you better sell it or something. I don't know. So the first time I saw the machine, my first. So, anyways, I guess that maybe light leads into like our first show, and mine was like the Gross Point or um, Gross Point. I'm thinking about it. All right, uh, the Pontiac show um, over at Clutch Car. I don't know what With my first show was. Machine. I don't remember what my first oh show my was God. actually. Now I, don't, I can't remember. I remember the Suicide Machines at what ninety. I don't remember <laughs> what it was, but at Clutch Cargos, that was the last time I went crowd surfing. Hell no. <laughs> Got dropped right in my ass, and I hear Jay go, "Is she okay?" And I'm like, eh. "I'm like, never do that again. No, thank you." I was like, "I'll learn my lesson." <laughs> but you know, yeah, I mean, those were some good times, and like, you know. Well, what do you think the first? What was the first show you went to? You think that was ska oriented? At Mosquito Club, and okay. seeing like Mustard Plug and the Scholars uh, and all them. And at the Detroit same on scene. the same bill. Tell yeah. It. Okay, really? Yeah. Okay. It was them at same bill. Actually, wait, let me think. No, it was Mustard, Par- Mustard Plug and the Parker Kings. And I think that was in 95 or something. Yeah, so you guys, yeah. Are, you guys are a little early than I am. Like, <laughs> I think the first one I caught was Mephiscopheles at the shelter. Was, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, I remember that one. That was great. That was, that was a hell of a show. <laughs> that was uh, what really... They were always a little harder than a lot of the other ska bands, mm-hmm. but yeah, there was, yeah, there was still a lot of really fun dancing going on there. But that was one of the shows that, like, I showed up and everybody was dancing. And I'd been going to metal shows for, you know, years before that. And you know, metal shows, the pits are kind of fun, but they're kind of angry. And you get in the pit at a ska show or, or a punk show, and it's a completely different thing where. Yeah, everybody's there having fun. If you fall, somebody picks you up rather than boots come flying yeah, at right. you. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was the first time I saw you know an entire dance floor full of people skanking, and I was like, that's kind of fun. It was yeah. 
The sky picks were fun. You like enjoy those ones. <laughs> My first show, I th now I remember now. My first show was the, um, uh, I think it was my senior year of high school. No, 97, I think. It was 97-ish. And I lived in Elmont, so all I had to do was take 69, and I could get over to Flint in 40 minutes. So I saw um, the first show I went to, I, I believe, was uh, it was Muster Plug and the, uh, the Park of Kings. Muster Plug and the Park of Kings and Square One. Square one, nice. Yeah, I, I don't know why I remember that. Yeah, Punk, Park of Kings, Mustard Plug, Square One, over at the Flint Local 432 in a, that the alley. Have you guys ever been there? No. you never been to the no. local? Oh, really? No. Yeah, it was like, it was like um, it was probably just as wide as this room. That's as wide as it was, and as, as well as long, I think. And the stage was like here on the side or whatever. So, yeah. And then uh, I remember like, a one, like there was like a chain, like, you know, from the top of the ceiling down and somebody was like eventually like swinging on it or something like that. Yeah. It's a very confined, mm -hmm. it was a very confined spot. It was called the Flint Local 432 and the guy named was Joe Rash. He was the guy who like scheduled all the shows there right in downtown Flint and uh, the Park of Kings and Plug. And during the Plug show, I remember, um, I don't know, for some reason like there was like a, like a section of the floor dropped a foot down. <laughs> like there's so many people bouncing and stuff and then people started like kind of like falling on top of each other until you know there's like you know it, it, it like dropped like part of the floor <laughs> and uh yeah so that was the first time i i think i saw my first sky show and i think the second one was obviously 1997 at um the you know when it was pie knob at that warp tour where there was the Boss Tones and Real Big Fish yeah. and Less Than Jake and Mustard Plug and the Machines, they were all on the same bill. Yep. Uh, you know. mm -hmm. And that was like the last one they had there. And then they went to the Phoenix Amphitheater's yeah. parking lot. Or, yeah, because that was the first one. Yeah. And, stuff, and that was a good time, that one. But I got to say, like, the second one was just to see the specials and to see, like, those kind of sky bands was just so them. amazing. You know, and those are like, you know, moments that I will take and be like, for Scott, those are great. And like, if you ever seen the Hepcats? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Amazing. I went to Chicago this summer and saw that. Oh, really? And it was packed from beyond, like right to the bar all the way through. And it was just like nonstop dancing and everything. I was like, and I mean, I know like a lot of ska bands don't come to Detroit and stuff, but it's worth the drive to like. I mean, just to drive there and stuff, you know, like Voodoo Glow Skulls are coming again. That was a, that was a violent. Show. I've never, I've never <laughs> seen them. I've never seen them play. Oh. The, the Voodoo Glow Skulls suffer from from one key problem, though. They have two songs. They've got like six albums, but they've got the slow song and the fast song, okay. mm -hmm. and they just. Slow song, slow song, fast song, fast song, fast song. Doesn't the, the singer like wear a mask for half the show or something? No, he, or like, well, no, like not no. Like most of it. Some saw, of it he does like, like a skull um, mask or something. I don't know. I never really, I never saw them play once before. I just saw videos, but yeah, they, they got a couple tracks I dig, but I saw them once and it was it was kind of halfway through the set. I was ready for the next band because I was mm -hmm. like, this is. You know, some bands pull it off. Like I saw Buck 09, and you know they they started with Wrong and Boyo, and then segued into two other songs and came back to Wrong and Boyo, and it was all the same tempo, and everybody was dancing, and nobody stopped the entire time. So we were all like drenched and ready to faint by the end of it. Mm -hmm. But they pulled it off, and it was fun, and it was good. But the Voodoo Glow Skulls, it's like you can only throw yourself at somebody for so long <laughs> before it just starts to hurt a little, and you're just like, okay, I need a break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I never saw them or, you know, Mephiscopheles or any of those bands. Mephiscopheles is great. They just their yeah, show they just played fun. with the toasters this uh, that this spring. Yeah, it was, it was last spring. Show. Is that the that Magic was Stick, right? Mm -hmm. It was the Majestic Cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even yeah, smaller just... area. Yeah. Yeah, it was really funny seeing the Majestic Cafe as like a little place to see shows. That was the like... like the first band I saw yeah. there was the Agrolites. Mm hmm And that's another band. That's I that's, that's entirely too small of a band. I would drama. like to see them. That was those guys are amazing, and I, I wish like, they would come back. I like I saw the reggae workers hmm. with them and stuff. That was amazing nice. and everything. Yeah, and it was right after the Slackers, and I was like, yay. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to the Black Christmas show. No, like, it's no. so packed in. Like it's like 
retarded. I'm like, there's so many freaking there's, people. There's so many people that you go in and out. You go out in the cold no. and go there. and But it's turned into, I don't know, it seems like it's always been, well, no, but you know how it is. Just like the, the Warp Tour, you know, it starts off with more Scott Punk stuff, but then it just deviates from stuff as the years went by. Because now you got, like, the Coffin cast, and you got some metal rock, and, you know, just a whole bunch of... cool, but, like, it's... Yeah, no, I like... There's only the... so many years they could have actually pulled off the Scott thing with it, because the Parker Kings broke yeah. up one year after the show. Remember, they did play a show, like, in 09 or something. Well, they played... The Parker Kings were you, who used to organize that show. Oh, really? And year after year, they was, they'd have Mustard Plug headline, but everybody was there to see the Parker Kings. Like I, right. I, I was Back saying, in the day when that earlier, was... Earlier, like, the Parker Kings would play, and Mustard Plug would be up next, but the entire place would clear out after the Parker Kings got off stage. Because that's who everybody was there to see. And eh, we've all seen Mustard Plug. Nobody wants to hear the freshman again. <laughs> <laughs> or the song You, or, you know, Box, you know, yeah, they, Box. Mustard Plug has some good songs, but... It, They've got, enough, by numbers. they've got enough albums that they don't have to play Mr. Smiley and Thigh High Nylons every single show. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine like being like a band that plays that song for 20 years? Like, you know, da, 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 da. I, I can't imagine playing a song for like, you know, 20 years and then times that by how many shows you play on a tour of that song, you know. I'd write more albums just so I didn't have to play it all that much. <laughs> Well, no, remember, remember the Telegraph used to do, like, the day after Christmas show? Yeah. yeah. There's always St. Andrews mm-hmm. Hall on December 26th. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just want to throw that out there. Oh, yeah. I remember those times. You know, what, 98, 99. Yeah. St. Andrews session. Hall is always the Telegraph. Like, that's where you were going, you know. The day after Christmas. Girl again. How many times can we hear it? I, but Let's that, yeah, the Telegraph, the Telegraph. Go Jeff with your bad self. Jeff <laughs> That, that's that's that, that he, he's a topic for a whole other show someday. For like, that's like a definitely an hour. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, yeah, but no, it wasn't the 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 day after Telegraph Christmas show that that came out before the Black Christmas thing. Yeah, came. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was, that was oh yeah. Before Third Wave died. Right, right. And we had nowhere to go. <laughs> we, but no, I remember. Uh, yeah, the Black Christmas thing kind of just went. You know, I don't know. It used to be. It was. It's always the plug in the machines. That was always a given. Um, I remember one year, oh seven ish, maybe when the exceptions hit the stage and they had both singers up there. Were you guys at that show? No. Nope. At the, with the. It was Black Damon Christmas. and John. Both of them were up there. At the Black Christmas one. Yeah, and they had the, the Magic Stick. But the Magic Stick. Is it, the one of the Majestic? No, or Majestic, Majestic. That so was, the exceptions was, were there that, that night. That was the one. Gangster Fun actually showed up to that show. Were they, they were on the bill too. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They had that, both of their singers too. But the but the thing is, I think this year it's just the plug and the machine. There's no other like you know. There's no exceptions. Gangs or fun park or you know. No. You would think that you know all these people have family back at home that they they can at least like get like uh, it just takes just, one practice and they yeah. just get up on stage and play you know. Well, it's because uh, they all come from here. I mean, yeah. obviously some of them went out of state. Not all of them want to. Like that's kind of why the Parker Kings stopped. Was I I, I heard through the grapevine that. They stopped showing up to those because after the set, they got in a straight-on bare-knuckle brawl with each other. And that's all anybody's likely to ever hear of the Parker Kings from now on was, nope, that was them. They're not around anymore. Well, I remember, like, when the Parker Kings played one of the Black or one of the, the Black Christmas things, the last one, I think, it was just Brett and Steve Kachnowski, the Telegraph guy, you know, he played. And then one sax player... It wasn't Milton or Doug Woosley from the Reuben Sandwich. It was just it was just Steve, you know, playing along with one of the the sax player yeah, of that band guys. and Brett Warren and Matt Van I think was on the bass and then maybe Berrigan was on the drums. So I mean it was kind of like a half Park of Kings act, you know. And at that point, you like half the people in the crowd don't even know who the heck these people are mm-hmm. on the stage, you know. I don't know. Anyway. Well, half the kids at those shows didn't know who the Parker Kings were anyway. <laughs> Most of the kids... That was actually one of the one of the really funny things. The first of those shows I went to was uh, the, one of the ones at the Magic Stick, and the kids didn't know about skanking. And so they were all trying to mosh as we're trying to dance to the Parker Kings or someone. And so um, a few buddies of mine and I back in the day had this thing called Lay Mass, the league against moshing, especially at ska shows. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And we just started flattening the kids because that's not what you do at a ska show. And to their credit, the kids were like, well, what are we supposed to do? And my buddies and I look at each other and we just start skanking. And then the whole crowd was skanking. And then every ska show I've been to since, kids are skanking. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Okay, now they get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. 
I th- it's, but yeah, those, those those kids weren't around. Like most of the kids that were there were probably in elementary school when the Parker Kings played their last show before they switched to the Porters. The Porters. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, the Porters, I don't know. They were okay. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I had their album, their CD. It was all right. You know. They, they left a bad taste in my Soul mouth. Soulful type stuff. Their, their first show, they billed themselves as the Parker Kings. Oh, yeah. And it was um, Super Dot, the Parker Kings, and I forget who else on the bill. And they get up on stage and like, hey, we're the Porters. And they start playing funk and soul. And I'm like, okay, well, that's okay music, but that's not what we came here to see. You said you were playing as the Burger Kings. Yeah, mm-hmm. we played with the Porters once in Mount Clemens, of all places, once my old band. Um, I'm trying to think, like... Uh, I don't know. I think, like, after Ska died, like, after, like, 98, 99... Wasn't it always dead, it though? It hasn't been right. dead. I mean, I don't... Yeah, I don't want to be, like, quote, quote, saying it's dead, but, like, but you dead. know, it kind of just mellowed out and where we have, like, now... Outskirt of other cities and you know places that are into it. You got Florida, California, and everything. But here in Detroit, it just went back to punk, yeah. and like it was all about punk right. and stuff. What bands on ska do you think were that that actually like kind of like got some of the mainstream people to know what ska was? What were some of the bands responsible for Real that? Big Fish, Goldfinger, yeah. and the Boss Tones. Oh, Goldfinger. I, was, was, <laughs> I, I remember the show that I said ska had died. It was um, Goldfinger, Big Rude Jake, Mustard Plug, and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones at Clutch Cargos. Yeah. And it oh. was ten times the crowd that anybody had seen at a ska show there before. I mean, it was packed front to back, side to side. And we knew it was going to be bad when Big Rude Jake, a swing band, got on stage and kids were moshing. And, like, you used to go to ska shows, and especially, like, the Parker Kings shows, you'd see... People from every group, you know, you'd see metalheads, you'd see hippies, you'd see frat boys, you'd see rude boys, you'd see punkers, you know, you'd see everybody. At this one, it was like wall-to-wall 89X listeners. It's not <laughs> disparaging the 89X <laughs> listeners. If that's what you're into, that's what you're into. But definitely not this crowd you typically see at a ska show. And the entire time, you know, there's like 10, 15 of us there up in, uh, wearing suits and ready to dance our asses off and... The entire time, we're fighting to even stay on our feet because everybody's moshing. And then the boss tones got on stage. And it took me like four four or five songs to get out of the pit. Just, you know, because the boss tones, they start their set. And the first half of the set is just nonstop. Mm -hmm. And I was sore and pissed off by the time I got out of that pit. And that was, yeah, it. there really weren't any ska ska shows of note after that until the Parker Kings started the Black Christmas stuff again in town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there were other bands in other cities that were doing it, but, you know, it was, Scott kind of went back into hiding yeah. at that point because it was... Right, well, especially because of the Michigan, like, you know, the Michigan ska base, because I used to be an Ichbenine Berliner, which we were, like, the tail end of this 90s ska stuff. You know, and these all the bands have been around since 94, the rest of them Michigan, right? It seemed like they all kind of, like, they all started dropping off like no tomorrow by like 2000 basically well, it was nationwide it wasn't just the michigan thing no but from what you know for me being in a band like playing had, with like, the scott Boston, bands you had state fairs you had yeah. goldfinger and all these other bands that were like being radio played and you're like yeah. going yeah. what and so every time you go to these shows you see like these young kids i'm like going you guys have no idea about that's, any of this stuff. that's from like, what i heard that's that's why the band stopped really you know, started just dropping was it wasn't the same for them either. Mm-hmm. Well, or, you know, they get older and get real jobs. There was some of that, but still, <laughs> I mean, the articles had real jobs and they were always playing. That's true, too. You know? But it almost seems like, you know, because I always play with these bands and we always, it seemed like we were like the Wired Frog, like, band of the, you know, the ska band. We'd always have all these, basically all the ska bands I've been playing for years, like, we always had them out for their, like, their last couple shows, I think, you know, before the 2000, it seemed as, that year, it seemed like that's when everyone started stopping playing, right? Because it almost seemed like Telegraph. They all stopped playing at the same time, like within a year or something. Like mm-hmm. Exceptions were gone. Articles are gone. Parker King's gone. Telegraph's now gone. You know, they play their final show. And uh, Axe Mama's gone. Superdot's gone. Well, or, or well, they kind of kept playing shows here and there, you know. But, uh, you know, the Articles and the Exceptions and Gangster Fun and the, you know, um, 
you know, the machine stopped playing or telegraph stopped playing and yeah, like all at once. And then it seemed like that turned into like, um, but then, but then there were bands that, you know, the people were still listening to after all those Michigan bands dropped out, I guess, like in the year 2000, which I stopped, you know, once those bands stopped and I stopped playing my band because then we quit too. <laughs> and, uh, then I just stopped. I mean, I kind of listened to Sky here and I just stopped listening to music. I, I, I kind of think I went into the rockabilly phase at that point, you know, cause you know, because a bunch of Sky people where you retire and die is when you go into the rockabilly genre. And I'm, you know, I'm, I think I'm kind of part of kind of you know kind of part of that right there and uh um but no there was like another generation of somewhat ska people right you know crowd that started not listening to those bands anymore but they were listening to like well um, it just like what do you call like it after you had ska you still had your punk your punk was continuous you know you have your Ramones, everybody everyone's always into punk but once ska stopped then you had your psychobilly and everything group and then that was when you had, like, you know, the Coffin Cats and everybody in Michigan. So that was the new group, the new hangout we're, we're, for, for people who just got into the scene. And that because they want to be new because, thing. Because you know? they want to, like, like, they want to stay being, like, an, like, like, like listening want, to like underground music. So they just up, went to Rockabilly I instead. I felt like left out because I didn't have my leather jacket. I'm like, where's my Is leather it true, jacket? though, that Rockabilly <laughs> listeners are actually, like, former Scott Punk young kids? There was, I think there was a lot of crossover uh, between like rockabilly and, and psychobilly and swing mm-hmm. when when ska died because I mean it's musically they're very similar other than you know the core you know the the backbeat and the the, the guitar beat to it uh, but especially you know a lot of people love chords in music and I think that's 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 yeah. where a lot of that crossed over was. You know, there was at, when as Scott was dying, there was rockabilly was getting popular. Psychobilly got a name, and you know, swing had had been rising in popularity for a while. I mean, heck, uh, Clutch Cargos had that that cigar lounge underneath it where oh, they were yeah. even teaching mm-hmm. swing dancing. The whole thing. That's right. That's right. I remember that. I, I think that's where a, a lot of that happened. Was was people looking for some other music that they liked that they could go to the show and not just get mauled every time they got in the pit? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, like, comes with, like, swing. I think, like, swing, like, kind of came from ska, and it was, like, another outlook for people to, who weren't into the ska group and everything. It was, like, let's get the modern people into this stuff. So let's get, what, um, Squirrel Nut Zipper and all those bands and stuff that are more swing and everything to get the more regular gender people to get into this group instead of the small group that was just into ska. Well, it was, yeah, it was, there was a lot of popularity that happened with Swing right around then because you had, right, kind of right as ska was dying, you, you had Cherry Pop and Daddy's Got Big, yep. uh, Big Rude Jake touring with the Boss Tones, uh, Big Bed Voodoo Daddy. There were a bunch of really good... Yeah, they uh, were good. I hesitate to call them mainstream because it's Swing. It was never mainstream, but, mm-hmm. you know, really musically good acts that uh, I think a lot of the people that would go to see ska bands that appreciate how much more musical talent it takes to play ska than it does to just have, you know, a three-piece generic One, two, rock pick act. it up, like, kind of, like, yeah. thing, you know, where it's, like, you don't have that whole three-piece, you know, like, six people of, like, instruments playing together and making harmony, uh, harmony and everything. You yeah. just have, like, that one, two, pick it up, and it's, like, eh, you know. That's what I'm Quick, everybody, Darren left the room. Talk bad about him before he gets back. (laughs) (laughs) But I think we should hijack his show and play some music. I know. (laughs) What music do we have? I mean, I brought basically my collection. Name a band, I probably got something. Come on, people, name a band. (laughs) (laughs) I I see in our listeners here we have the Hills Ska Punk Radio guy. Pick a band. Make a request. Do I, I have I have a box full of CDs and a folder full of CDs. <laughs> a box full of stuff. A box full of stuff. No, we're not playing more pu- the mustard plug. <laughs> no, and see that's a th- well. No, I was gonna say. Uh, um, sorry, I, I had to use the restrooms. So I had to get out of studio. Uh, from it, okay, I'm back. Um, but I think there was like oh, I don't know what you guys are talking. We're talking about rockabilly, I'm sure, and uh, for a minute. But we made fun of you for a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. just helping out. I think there was like <laughs> after us though, there was like a generation of ska listeners who started listening to like bands from the 2000s, and they were probably the come on, what was the main like 
crossover band. The guy that was, you know, took all his songs and like Streetlight Manifesto Street Group. Manifesto. Those yeah. that crowd yeah. that that started like the you know and those people are like yeah. probably twenty eight now, the oldest to twenty five. You know no, those they're, people. They're in their thirties now. Well, okay, well then they're, they're probably in their thirties. <laughs> but that's a whole different. That was a whole different crowd that went to the Streetlight Manifesto, like that that age group. And I don't. I can't, that's the only well, band with I music, can. Music, it's like a five year like you know thing. If you're like five years younger than this person, you right. miss out on this music. And you but know. I mean, I'll, I'll go to so with them. It's like that, yeah, you missed because, out. That's because, where Streetlight really helped people out because he loved his first album, and all these kids were too young to hear it, so he just re released the whole album. Right, and that started controversy because he was, because originally all his music was from the band Catch Twenty Two, Catch Twenty, yeah, Catch Twenty Two, and then he just re released everything under Streetlight Manifesto, yeah. and though I mean, it's good to have horns in a band. I just for some reason maybe I don't know. I was just never into like it. Always seems like his horn, the horns are out of control. <laughs> it's just too. Much. It's like it's just over inflated horn lines and those I, kind I of think songs. His stuff. What I like about his songs is. He can play a fast song that you can still dance to. Like, um, Keys Be Nights or, or Point Counterpoint are both really, mm-hmm. really high tempo songs that they're not, they're not something that you can only mosh to. They've still got a good rhythm to it that you can actually dance to if you want. Right. Well, yeah, because I remember I went to the Royal Oak Music Theater over in the, it wasn't, was it, when was it? The summer. Yeah, Streetlight was playing, but I was only there to see MU330. They were opening the show, <laughs> you know, and you, you could just tell like half the crowd, like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> you know, they see Don Pat, Pat Hass up there. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Show. <laughs> and they got Jerry up there, you know, he's ready to go with his like little skinny sunglasses and his high socks and ready to go and, you know, and... uh that's who I was there to see, you know, and I was running late too. It was like, ah, oh, it sucked because I was getting into line and buy a ticket ahead of time. And I, I heard like, you know, one of their songs playing, right? You just like ran I'm like, ah, like, well, no, I couldn't. I still had to buy my ticket. <laughs> so they were already up on the stage, you know, and uh, so I got in there after like the two first two songs was over. And then they played their set. And, um, and then. I think it was only a two-band thing. I mean, it was just ME330, and then the streetlight played for the last hour and a half, and that's when you get to just, you know, just, you just talk to people. You know, well, my, I was just talking to people during the rest of their set, you know, people I saw before. Hey, how you doing? You know, you know. But, I mean, but but the vast majority of the crowd were really, you know, there to go see the streetlight, you know. You know, just the, the whole, like, chaos that goes on with, uh, you know, them. Who was that other band? What was another band that... Um, you know, post two thousand, like it was like, and I just saw them play. Jay Navarro and the Traders were with them at the Majestic, but they opened for them or something. Uh, come on, what's his name? He doesn't really sing the songs. He kind of just like talks the lyrics. Big D and the Kids Table. Oh, okay. You knew exactly what I'm talking yeah. about if I say that. <laughs> yeah, Big D and the Kids Table. I mean, the, you know. The, he's just he's not really singing the song. He just kind of talks the songs basically. <laughs> oh, hey, we got two CDs. Right? <laughs> well, it's not even open. Yeah, like Streetlight and the Big D's and the Kids Table. Those are bands I just never, like, I don't know. I just stopped listening to ska music at that point. They're and backup I, vocalists. Uh, he has a, three girls that sing backup for him that they're starting to tour under the name the Doped Up Dollies. Their stuff is actually really cool. Okay. His, his stuff, he kind of falls into the same trap Voodoo Glow Skulls did, where if you've heard three of his songs, you've heard all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's he, he's telling stories it, from his life, and that's cool. But it's the same tempo, the same, tempo, the same, the same kind same of beat rhythm, and the stuff same like that. Chords, where like, it's like, yeah, I don't want to be like biased. Like when I saw the Interrupters, and like a great band, you know. But you're taking that straight, like where they call them ska. Yeah, they're ska, but it's that whole like op ivy kind of ska. Oh, they're they're, 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 de- they're, de- they're definitely like, t- they're like, definitely like, borrowing from op ivy. And, and it's just totally tell. taken from them in which she yeah. has a great voice in which if you put more instruments into that and more rhythm and stuff, it was like that could be so much more. And I'm just like I, I think they'll they benefited a lot uh, Tim Armstrong is who really got them got them hurt yeah. and well yeah they, I, I think hanging out with songs him is going to a lot with that and he's, they've they've got a lot of good background on it like they do you know a Jimmy Cliff song they mm-hmm. do a lot of really good music but I think they could definitely benefit from more horn yeah, just adding on to it just know? a trump just maybe just a trump yeah. that's all you need you know <laughs> 
but yeah, it's very just like three chords, one tempo. Just I still I had a blast at that show. That was I still had a great time. Oh yeah, I guess. My, my punk rock sensibilities accept a much lower bar of entry to things because you really got to be as bad as Minor Threat before I say you suck. Right. Yeah, and, and, I mean, true that. <laughs> We're just like, why was I listening to this back then? Still love it. Yeah. No, I know no, that. No, Minor Threat has always sucked, and I still think they will always love suck. It. No. Yeah. Oh, you don't? No. Aww. Yeah, I'll give Minor Threat, Minor Threat credit. Other bands have actually turned some of their music into decent songs. <laughs> <laughs> Minor Threat never did. Uh, the, the only thing I can give them credit for at this point is that Bernie Sanders went to some of their shows. Oh. So props to Bernie Sanders, but yeah. Yeah, Minor Threat sucks. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say one thing to that, like about wait, what were we talking? Oh yeah, uh, the interrupters. Yeah. So I think this leads into this point of the segment where we're uh, talking oh, about the present now. tense. Right, How right. How is this all happening now? Now, it seems like, yeah, I, I guess the interrupters are playing, they're coming to Grand Rapids. Yeah. They're not coming back to Detroit, but they're a Grand Rapids show over in, uh, with the yeah, Dropkick drop Murphys. Yeah. You know, but I don't know, it doesn't give me motivation to drive three hours to Grand Rapids, especially if it's on a weeknight. I'm not sure what date that is. But, uh, but there I, are some interesting shows coming. And we've got the, the uh, Punk Scholidays show. That is right. On Friday, December 23rd. Uh, we might have a commercial on there in a minute. All right. What else is there coming uh, up? There's also the Black Christmas show. Uh, I don't English remember. Bee. What is that? English Are they, playing, are they playing the Magic Bag? Yeah. Always. Um, yeah. The, other, the one that uh, but still, I was... It's a still fun show, though. Eric Abbey from 1592 and Dirty Notion and Super Dot fame. Um has a DJ night at L Club on uh, Mondays. In it's pronounced El Club. El Club, okay. sorry. Um, I was I was up there this past week, and he was saying, hmm? "I was there. I was there. Oh, I go. Um, oh, I left. Yeah." He said that um, in March, uh, Dirty Notion is play, I think it's Dirty Notion. One of his bands is playing with the Skints from the UK. Oh yeah, who are phenomenal. Yeah. And oh yeah, I did see that show there. That's uh, that's definitely a show to, to keep an eye out for. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and keep uh, talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good to like see like these these local bands and stuff that have been playing, you know, through you know the Taylors, and then you have you know. Um, was it 1592 and all these stuff? But like they're taking ska and they're like it's actual ska well this a lot, of, a lot of the newer bands one of the things i really like about them is they're they're a lot of them are taking a third wave sound mm -hmm. but they're they're throwing back all the way to first wave you know there's you hear a lot of first and second wave mixed into it you or or their own take on things like um soul radix from the Nashville. great band yeah um, yeah definite third wave sound but huge first wave influence to, to all of their stuff. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so we're talking about this. So we have the Interrupters. So what other, like, yeah, you have, like, us here in Michigan, our little metro Detroit area. You know, Mustard Plug's still doing their shows, and then you have all the semi-retired bands like the Pie Tasters and Enemy 330 who just basically just play in their hometown areas and they never come out anywhere because they're, they're just playing it just to, you know, play. They're not sure. active really anymore for all purposes, right? And you still have the Slackers, who still, the only place they come to is the Blind Pig in Ann Arbor. They don't play. <laughs> Last time they were in Detroit was probably the early 90s. Probably the 90s. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever for, seen them play Detroit. No, for whatever reason. Uh, but they still, they always get a good crowd to come out to, the, you know. So, like, and then the Toasters, that's, you know, we saw mm -hmm. the Toasters at the Sanctuary. And, you know, and it's just Bucket, obviously, with whatever his new crew is, you know, at any given time. And, um, the real big fish is going to come to town. It's just Aaron Barrett, basically, with his entourage, <laughs> you know. Um, but, like, is there, aside from those bands, do you know more about this? Like, is there, like, a band besides the Interrupters, I guess, that is, like, current now and that have somewhat of a following interest? Well, there's there are, but they... Because I'm out of the loop. I don't know. touring all that much. Um, you got the Crombies. Who are they out of Chicago? Are, right, I that, saw them open up for Voodoo. I believe you requested on Detroit's oh, Cat did. Radio. I, yeah, I bought that CD. The minute I saw them, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Where are they from dude. again? They're, they're from they're Chicago. Chicago. It was the original singer, and I guess part of the lineup from Deals, from Deals Gone, Gone Bad, Bad yeah. way back in the day. 
Uh, you got westbound train out of I want to say Boston. Uh, Massachusetts. They're still playing. Um, uh, I, local shows mostly. Like okay. a lot of these bands are just playing local shows, but I, I'm sure an email to their book will uh, get them out wherever as long as you can uh, ensure a draw. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Soul Radix. Soul Radix tours a bunch. A lot of the time though, they're touring in Europe. Um, and, and they're from where? They're from. Na- I think it's it's national. They're in Memphis, te- they're the Tennessee Memphis. band yeah. with the female singer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Hepcats on and off. Um, you got the Skints from the UK. This will be the first time they've really come to the US for more than just playing a show out in like LA or somewhere. Um, I guess they're they're going to actually tour this time around. Um, you got a bunch of stuff popping up locally. With like Downtown Brown, St. Thomas Boys Academy. Don't and mention Downtown Brown uh-huh. because they're playing right down the street from the Detroit <laughs> Sky <laughs> Review Show over at the New Way Bar in Ferndale. Hey, you said it, not me. No, I didn't say that. Now those that many people have, like know that that show's happening. Anyways, yeah, Downtown Brown will be playing the same freaking day, but that's a kind of a different crowd anyway. I'm not worried about it. There's there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on locally. Um, <laughs> a lot of it around. Uh, we got the Detroit Sky Review popped up. We've got Jane mm-hmm. of there's, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on locally. Um, uh, <laughs> a lot of it around. <laughs> We're on delay. Oops. Keep going. Don't let that confuse you. <laughs> uh, Eric Abbey is just uh, he, he's becoming kind of a prolific name in, in Detroit music. He there's is. He's in like three bands. <laughs> three, three or four bands. Um, maybe four. Maybe four, five. Four. You, got, you can't count. Many you can't more. count out Super Dot. Uh, you know he's got his DJ night happening. I know he's done some stuff with other bands as well. It's, uh... You know, I think, okay, obviously if anyone's paying attention to the timer, we have three minutes left. So we're going to like plug a little uh, Christmas show here, and uh, you guys just like are a little commercial for you. And uh, here we go. Um, let's give this a shot. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Have you heard that, um, have you heard, Liz? I have heard. Yes, this is going to be the Detroit Sky Review Show. Yeah, they're going to be playing with the Dirty Notion and the St. Thomas Boys Academy. Hey, Scott, Bob, you know where that's going to be happening on Friday, December 23rd? Where at? No, Darren, I don't know. Tell me more. Well, it's going to be at none other than the New Way Bar. Oh, yeah, in fabulous Ferndale. And uh, if you have kids, you're going to have to find a babysitter because it's only 21 and up. You want to know how much it costs, Liz? $5. $5. That's right. Just a mere $5 gets you into the show. So once again, I'll be there. So this is, uh, yeah, the Dirty Notion, the Detroit Sky Review, and the St. Thomas Boys Academy happening at the Loving Touch. No, not the Loving Touch. <laughs> the New Way Bar. <laughs> Don't go there. The New Way Bar over at, uh, yeah, New Way Bar, Friday, December 23rd. Go be there. I'll be there. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Punk Scala Days. All right, so that's a little Christmas plug for the show. Okay, so that was obviously just Don't like... Don't show up at the Loving Touch. No, do not stop at the Loving Touch. There is a show happening there, but do not, do not go to that show. It's One, it's more money, and one, it, the music's not as cool as what you'll find over at the New Way Bar on Friday, December 23rd. All right, so we have two more minutes. Okay. Two more minutes. Can your uh, laptop play a CD? You got a good song to play out to? Um, a play out to? Like an outro? Is there only one song on this no, right now? First track. First track, okay. It easy. Gotcha. Okay, hopefully I... Th- okay, so I haven't like, put a disc in here in a while. All right. So, hey, we'd like to thank everyone for listening right now. You know, this kind of ska talk. Um, yeah, like I said, we we did not do a trivia today, but maybe we'll uh, get together some other time soon and to do a trivia. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be... Well, if we are going to offer a free you know entrance to the show... It'd have to be sometime during the week. Um, but we'll do like another Scott Talk show at some point. All right. So what did you... Okay. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Windows cannot access... What does that mean? Okay. Just let it play and it'll be good. This will be King Hammond. Old school. But this is uh, a recent release from uh, Jump Up. Recent? Uh, he still well, does? Semi-recent. Like, really? Drop it! Is that it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, all right, so how much time? So how long is it? Should we? Oh, we got to call like, now. Just, we have to call now. All right, so anyways, thank you for tuning in. My name's Darren Way, and we're with Scott, Bob, and Liz. Let's say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Peace out. Uh, oh, my God. Drop it. Drop out.